Good afternoon. This is the Parcelsville Planning Board. We'll call this meeting to order on February the 16th at 6 p.m. And, uh, and start our meeting on our uh, agenda that we have in front of us. All. We have three board members here, so we have a quorum. And we're about, we have a couple that are, are, that are missing that have other uh, issues they had to take care of. Along in the CEO had an inspection tonight. That's why he's not here either. We have a lot of correspondence in front of us. Uh, since we call the meeting to order, item number two is correspondence. Do you have a copy of our agenda? No, I like a not. copy. Can oh. you give him a copy, please, uh, Desiree? I was going to say so we can see where we're at. She didn't have to run and get it. That's okay. <clears throat> I'm on a planning board myself, so I, I always try to take it easy on our secretary. Uh, not her. We got to make her earn her key. Oh my! Yeah. <laughs> so the correspondence that we have in front of us, gentlemen, is uh, we just got this one today, and we need to look this one over. One of them is January 19th minutes. Go through your package. Yeah. Right. Find January 19th. Oh, we do correspondence or minutes? Well. Uh, first thing is correspondence. If you look at your agenda, I'm not. I'm trying to follow the agenda and go right down to correspondence. Uh, uh, January the 19th uh, meeting, and also February the 2nd was the um, workshop. So we want to uh, look these two over and. Uh, well, that's item three. Huh? That's what Andy's saying. So that's item three. Item three is the review of minutes. I'm two's correspondence. Well, I'm sorry. You, sorry. Were, I, I <laughs> you were right. <laughs> correspondence. And what she gave them to me is this was here at first. Right. You had it reversed on us, young lady. See? I, I thought of that the other day when I talked to you about it, and I will fix that for the next meeting. Yeah, but you uh, messed it up. Correspondence. <clears throat> Notice that would be like a. Uh, the, what, the letter to Rodney Berry? Yep. Okay. Let's go to the letter to Rodney Berry. That's where we approved his uh, uh, business for wood stoves and parks. It's been signed and sent out to him. Notice the decision and fact finding for map U04 slash lot 004. So we approved him the last time. So he's moved, they're moving forward on that there. That's the little low uh, is it yeah, the green building on the side of the child care. You know where it's at too, don't you? Okay. I got one wrong. You got one on, on that, the wrong one? One, one quick suggestion on yes, all letters of uh, decision where there was a public hearing. I would suggest that we include public hearing was held. And you know, if there was no objection by the budget, right. we include that. On the letter of decision? I would. Okay. I want to hear from you. Yeah. You know, further down the road, yeah. you can say, well, I'm not public here, what's happening? Yeah. Good point of view. Desiree, do you have that, please? Yeah, I, I think I just missed it on this one because I have done that on the other letter. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, I think I remember seeing it on some other letters. I don't know why I don't see it on there. Probably, honestly, I usually copy paste and just correct the dates and stuff. Yep. So the letter I copied and pasted this from was probably one that didn't have a public hearing. Okay. We just have to make sure you're on all future uh, letters of decision that that's on there. Because almost all of them are going to have a, uh, a public hearing on there. Another correspondence. What else do we have? We do have some more correspondence. We but that's down there, the rest of this stuff. You know, that one from the lawyer. Yes, um, let me get down here. She's put that at the end of the package. That's where I'm gonna find it. That's, I did it by the day it came in. Okay. <clears throat> okay, from our lawyer. Well, not our lawyer. The lawyer for Roger Moreau's application for site plan review R19-44. We have a, le a letter uh, from the lawyer from Roger Moreau addressed to the planning board. And you can see what they're asking for here is uh, 
attached to this letter. If you go to the second and third page, you're going to see there is a, uh, a zoning board of appeals that's attached to it. And attached to that is the state of Maine Superior Court and their decision. While we have this letter and also why some action that we have to take. Because uh, some of the information uh, was passed over and taken to the Superior Court by the uh, petitioner, Michael Nelligan, and the Superior Court appealed, denied, or dismissed his appeal and sent it back to the town uh, to follow the uh, actions to be taken by administration in the town and the planning boards. Once all those have been completed, then the uh, door is open for appeal to the state superior court. But they have not been completed as of now. That, that uh, session got skipped over. You see what happened on there, Andy? Yeah, I understand. Okay. Uh, we would have had this done already if yeah. it hadn't got to some right. the Superior Court. If they had skipped us, we paid it. That's what we I did. think it's important that we, uh, you know, underscore what the, what the court is saying is that the town has all remedies to pursue prior to any legal action right. being taken, and then somebody who intervenes yes. prior to that is premature. Right. And that's what they're telling us. And if you go through that letter attached from the Zoning Board of Appeals, it's uh, they were asking the conclusions. They're asking for one, two. They're asking for two things that we have to go over in detail, and then we can uh, have uh, Desiree schedule the uh, schedule the uh, Roger Rose application to come back before the planning board again. I put him on the March 16th. Agenda. You did put him on the March 16th. That'll give us time to go through that then. Yep. So we'll probably need a workshop between now and then because of that. <coughs> All right, any, any questions about this letter? I don't want to have to read it into the record. It's just, we have a letter it's, from the, huh? I can put a note that it'll be attached. Yes, be it attached. It goes in the file anyway. Right? It goes in the file, yes. There's no sense of reading all this. We just paraphrase it, if that's okay with the board. You guys agree with that? Just paraphrase it just like we just did? Yeah. yeah. Okay. We can't really discuss it because it's not on the agenda. It's, it's not. It's it's just correspondence, right? You're correct. Andy is correct. Okay. And I believe that's all of the correspondence at this time. Any board member have anything else about correspondence to bring up? We're going to consider this stuff we got here from the Austin people on their new business. That's on their new business. Okay. Oh, that's a, oh, that's, that's a lot of information out here. Okay, now then let's go down to number three, where I got it reversed. <laughs> and number three is review of the minutes from January the 19th and also from February the 2nd, the workshop. Would you guys, I've looked over the workshop, I haven't looked over January 19th minutes yet. Would you take a few minutes to look those over, see if you have any corrections to make? I have a question on both of them. Huh? I have a question on both of them. Why is Gerard Clifford still showing up as being absent? That implies he's still a member of this board. I haven't heard anything different. No one's removed him from the board officially as of yet. Okay. Uh, officially, he's not removed. Uh, I'm just, you know, I'm I'm just sure. looking at I know. what this implies and what I right. can make out of it. Right. So, all right. So, <laughs> if we haven't officially removed him from the board until that's done, he still has to show up either present or absent. Okay. Does that make sense to you? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, that's something we need to discuss at the workshop too, because I have some information that I'm going to bring up. Or executive session. Maybe we do a quick executive session afterwards tonight. Uh, uh, anything else uh, from either a, a board member or myself for both of these minutes? No, I looked both of them over when they were emailed over. Yeah. Uh, no concerns on the 19th. Okay. And just one slight change on the, uh, the day of the February 2nd. I did change it, I just didn't repeat yeah, it. Yeah, that's fine. Is it been what? It's just Roger's missing the last letter on his name. It's nothing. Who? Roger. It's 
More, yeah, I see it now. Yeah. I see that. Must nothing, be. nothing substantial. <laughs> but it's got to be corrected. Yeah. You have that information? It, it's corrected. I just, I had already printed that, so I didn't okay. reprint it. Yeah, Roger, Roger Moreau left off the last letter. So if someone would like to make a motion to accept the January 19th minute and the Wednesday, February the 2nd workshop, please, uh, please do so. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor, show a right hand. All in favor, unanimous. Okay. Now then, old business, item number four. This one we've been at for quite a while too. This is a site plan review application that we're trying to bring up to date to make it streamline it and put more things in line like they should be. Uh, in accordance with what's required in the book in our uh, land use and development ordinance and Desiree's worked on this for quite a while and uh, I think finally this may be the last time that we have to has the board reviewed this with you yet? Which board? We've approved it. Yeah. The slightly. Yeah they said that they gave it the go ahead at their whatever meeting they looked at it. Okay, I didn't know that because I missed yeah. one meeting, remember, so yeah. I didn't know that they Yeah, they, they said that they had looked at it, reviewed it, and it was good to go. Okay. The, uh, the one change that's highlighted yep. there at the beginning, that was suggested by the town clerk because um, it said originally a site plan review ordinance, which we do not have. We have a section in the land use ordinance. Yeah, it's a town of Parsonsfield land use and development ordinance. Is right. What it is. Yep. In submission of application, that big paragraph on the front <clears> page, if you go and look, that she's at the yellow that what she had to change. That was the last change that had to be done. Uh, by streamlining this now, it doesn't, um, it relieves the CEO of approving something that he doesn't, all he needs to do is review it and sign it that he received it. And uh, it, my call says, it's got to come to the planning board for really for approval. Um, property and authorizations, use of property and then it goes through all the uh, a, a, a applicability of permits and the voters and all the information site plan content and it's got gen uh, submissions that we asked for is from a through y and all of them are listed here now and there's kind of a ready in order and on the back of that is like a blank sheet of paper a, a through y where they can put their answers down if they've got to be longer they can add to it add attachments and also the butters list form so we want the butters list name and their mailing address not their living address and property address mouth and lot number and that way Desiree doesn't have to go back and once they submit this and go back through all that information again and do research and try to correct everything for the list of the butters anybody else got any other questions over this this is um Coming back to something Aaron said in the workshop, mm -hmm. I, I think this is fine. Okay. Um, in general. Okay. Um, but Aaron <laughs> said anything that references state statutes can be added as a link to the website. Now, this interests me because when okay. I served on the board of New Hampshire, we had two books. We had that book, the town book, and we had the state RSAs. And we always referred to RSAs. Here, we really don't know what they are. Since I've been here, the only time it comes up is if somebody calls friends it up. And I think it would be helpful not just to have links, but to actually have, I mean, in New Hampshire, they have a specific book, right. land board, right. from the state. I don't know if the state here has anything. Yes, that. Maine has a, Maine's MMA, Maine. Maine Municipal Association has a book strictly for planning boards. It's and you set that out. No, it, it's the, it's, the, it's the, like the handbook. Right, that's yeah. not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the statutes that are referenced in our own ordinance. I don't, I don't know if there's an actual book. I've never, I know I know how to get to them online. I just, I don't know an actual like hard copy. Can you look, look at that for us, please? The, re the reason I have it is because, for instance, where it came up, I don't want to talk about too much, but in a recent case, it came up with some reference. A state reg regulation regarding a well distance to the well. Right, right. We should have all that yeah. information mm -hmm. so we don't get one blindsided and two so we can make fully informed decisions. So that's all I'm asking as sure. much as possible. 
That's good. I'll look into it. Would you look into that for us, please? Mm -hmm. If there is a book, then we'll somehow we'll get a we will we'll get five copies of it anyway. Okay. Good point. Okay, if there's no other questions over this town of Parsonsville Planning Board site plan review application, I think uh, can we make a motion tonight to accept it in its final form? So moved. Andy moves it. Second. Second by Aaron. All in favor, show of hands. <coughs> Unanimous. So it's done. I will send it to the office in the morning to be put on the website. Good. And let them know that if somebody asks for it, that they should be getting that one out. You give after you revise it. Good. New business. <clears throat> we have this on our agenda for discussion on for the planning board's discussion. Proposed gas station in Effingham in relation to Parsonsville Aquifier and the river. And I mean, we got a package here. It's quite lengthy. Uh, I don't know how many of these, how many times you guys have had an opportunity to go over all these letters. And also this um, professor's letter from, um, he's a geoscience scientist, Smith College in Northampton, Mass. I've read it all, um, actually. I emailed all the stuff to you guys prior to the name, I don't know if you received it. When, no, when you sent it to me, it wouldn't let me open anything, but Tim emailed it back to you and me, and I was able to forward it out. That's why we have hard, hard copies. All oh, right. right. Yeah. All of the attachments. We yeah, have all, all the hard copies. Yeah. So this is a lot to wait for. It is. I just want to bring up for discussion only. That's, it's, it's outside of our jurisdiction altogether. Any way you look at it, we have no say-so about what's going on here. But what I think that we need to uh, protect is our water, our aquifers and our river. And for discussion purposes, from this information that we have, we need to, as a board, sit together on this and see, do we want to pin a document to send to the planning board in Effingham as, uh, and give them our position, our thoughts on that letter? Or, What's the board's preference? What do you, what is it, what's this discussion? Well, you know, you say we have no jurisdiction and that may or may not be true. Again, you know, my reference is to <coughs> trying to service our board in New Hampshire. Right. Where there was an RSA that stated that adjoining municipalities had the right to have intervener status right. if an action in a neighboring town impacted them. Okay. Um, when you read this information, uh, it pretty much speaks for itself. It does. To speak to it. Right. They've got a pretty well credentialed expert describing why this is a problem, mm -hmm. where it sits. Right. Um, the Port of Planning Board has come on board to, mm -hmm. you know, right. intervene, the Saco River Commission. I Commission thought, has, yeah. I thought that uh, we should join in. Okay. That's my personal opinion. Um, in as much as it sits close to the river and yep. it sits on the hospital. Your drinking water comes out of the river. Yeah, it does. I don't know about your statement, but well, I know mine comes out of the river. Yeah. Yeah. And so, it, you know, it has a direct impact on the city yes. in this town. That's but since we're not really a budding town, which I understand what you're saying about a budding town, we, we don't butt Effingham. Yes, we do. We do we? Toward the backside? Probably, yeah. Okay. If you go out to, uh, if you go out yeah. middle, middle road all the way to the end. Okay. Cross over to Effingham, I think Farwell, Providence Lake. Yeah, okay. 153. 153, I forgot about 153. Correct. On 153, we do a button. You're right. And let me ask your opinion. I don't know how much it is you read. You're a civil engineer. Right. You know? I would like to hear, you know, when, if you have a I haven't read this stuff, you know. I've read it two times uh -huh. and try to study it. And I study it and I'm looking at how the aquifer is set up. Aquifers are different types of, of materials. This is stratified. Mm -hmm. And stratified aquifers have more of a problem than a uh, layered aquifer. Mm -hmm. So with a problem with a, with a stratified aquifer that they have in Effingham, it's easier to penetrate that, and once that gets down in there, 
It just continues to penetrate down because there's nothing to stop it. And yeah, it can be very, very bad. Even a minor amount, it can start to dilute with the water there and mix with it, and it just keeps moving down. And then wherever the water comes through the, the area, where it goes towards the river, that aquifer does, it carries that pollutants right with it, with that water's pollutant. Um, that's where I see that there's a, there's a big problem because of the type of, type of aquifer it is, absolutely. But I, the problem that I'm having, and I, we need some more information, we have to probably talk to that planning board, so you guys know, to Effingham's planning board, there's a gas station there before. Correct. Okay. And for some reason, they took the tanks out and they stopped selling gas there. I don't know why, what for, what stopped. I don't have any idea. But I'd like to hear what the planning board has from Effingham has to say. Are you on the planning board? No, I'm not. But See, I don't know. No, that's what I want to talk to the okay. planning board. Oh, I understand. All I was going to say was that's no. part of my presentation to you is some of that no. information, just for information. So. No, and uh, I want to hear what that planning board has to say and why, and then why did they allow the Board of Appeals allow that they give them a variance to put the gas station back in there because the new tanks are in there. What, why, if there a, was an issue all along and everybody knew about it, <laughs> you go to Fort, and they're, they're, they're the residents of uh, Effingham, the Board of Appeals is, they have to be. Why did they give them a variance and allow them to put the, no bill to put that gas station back in there again? Uh, that's why we need to, uh, I think we need to talk to the Board of, the uh, Parsons, I mean, Effingham uh, Planning Board. They may, not, they may or may not be willing to talk to themselves. Okay, okay. It won't work to ask with it. Well, their meeting, I believe, is tomorrow. 24th. They got, they got moved. Okay. The planning board is meeting on the 24th. Is that what it is? All right. So, a week from. Okay. Um, so, maybe we could go over and that should be on their agenda and ask them. I think that's a question for <coughs> the public or not, because we're not the citizens of that community. <coughs> But can we go in and ask questions? It, it, the way it works here, I don't know how it works in Effingham, is if somebody comes in from another town and wants to speak, the board votes on whether they can speak. We'll vote on it, yeah. yeah. But we always allow our citizens to speak first, always. Yeah. And then we allow the others to speak after. If there's nobody else, then we allow them. I remember us doing that, Andy. You're right. We do. We did allow. Are we open to public discussion? No. Okay. Let me know why. We're coming. Um, <laughs> this is a board's discussion right now. Yeah. Go ahead, Al, you got something? I was just going to say I completely agree with you that, you know, some sort of statement similar to what Porter did, you know, outlining our concerns with it is, would, would you know, would do well to, uh, to put ourselves in that position. I mean, you know, you've got Sacco River Corner, Town of Porter. Right. Right. Um, I mean, I don't know, I know Porter, Porter relies on that aquifer, I don't know that any any citizens here do i think we have our own aquifer here and it's okay. different than theirs yeah because i talked to jesse about it. i asked jesse and he doesn't know well i'll leave it till we talk we have jesse in here with us yeah maps here to show it. yeah um, i don't know that it comes to our side of the river i don't think but it could, once it gets into the river, right. once it's in the river, it can go any place. Right. It don't, no, it don't decide which side it wants to go on or not go on. I mean. But I think that's where our letter would have to come from, right? Yeah. Obviously, that, that's the impact. The impact is because the river carries the contaminants down to us. Right. And to our aquifers. Yeah. And to our drinking water. Yes, and to our drinking waters, our wells, and to our water station that sits right on the river right down there. But right therefore they pump right behind my house. <laughs> I mean, my feeling is that, you know, we could wreck that. I think you're correct that we should find out why they did what they did. Right. However, <clears throat> regardless, I, I think it's a wrong decision. Right, I understand. Um, I'm on the same page as you. I mean, there's another, there's another uh, gas station owned by the same people. Okay. Right on the road. You know, so, uh, Freedom Convenience Store? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the same. That's the same. That's up by the uh, down the state line. Right by the line. Yeah, right by the line. And it's probably 10 feet from the river. Yeah. You know, 
So how that got there, I don't know, but they're there. They're there, but they just said on an aquifer. That might be the only difference. But, you know, if you read, what, you read that packet and it talks about small spills, right. not sufficient to yeah. carry Absolutely. stuff to the river. So, yeah. you know, it, it's hard to know. I mean, um, we have no standing with them and we have no real relationship with them. And I think that our first responsibility is probably to the citizens of this town. Right. So I would, I would just draft a letter and send it off. That's my thing. Okay. I, I do agree with you, but I just wanted some more information before we do it. Okay. Yeah, I just, uh, I think we need, the this planning board needs to, to protect our citizens from the point of view of protecting their water and their drinking water that's public only wells. That's what we should be trying to do in any way, in shape or form that we can. And, because uh, I don't want to drink contaminated water. But in lieu of getting those answers, I mean, you're not going to get those answers until next week. And next week. If they allow you to get those answers. If they allow us even ask the question. So, should we have a letter right. to accompany these other documents that goes we in? We might write a letter with Alan's sort of uh, concern in it, saying we're concerned to the Afghanistan planning board, saying, mm -hmm. although we don't fully understand why we took the actions we did, and we'd be interested to find out why. I'm very concerned about protecting the water. Right. right. The like water for this. They're coming into the river. Yeah. Yeah, because that's where our water comes from. Most all of it. Or if the river gets contaminated, then wells are contaminated. And our drinking water, public water is contaminated. Yep. And that's the problem. Right. Uh, so that's where we stand right now, I guess, guys. Uh, any, any more discussion? I like this just things like this discussion. <laughs> These are good. This is really good. So in order to get it to them in a week, better write it tonight. We got to write it, yeah. Okay. Friday at the latest, right? No, because uh, since I'm retired, I can hand deliver it any day. <laughs> I can drive over there and give it to them, or to the town office, because the town office makes sure they get it. <clears throat> well, we need to compose something, right? Yeah, we need to compose something. Now, who would like to take the lead on it? Hey, Aaron, you have time to do something like that to take a lead on it? Or would you like to take a lead on it and uh, draft something up for us? I mean, I can certainly follow, you know, an that outline one. an outline similar to yeah. some things that we've seen. That's um, what I would do, too, if I was doing it. I think you can make it short and sweet. Yeah, we right. don't need it long. You don't have to refer to all the information. No. You yeah. say <laughs> we've received it, we've read it. We have great concerns. We'd like to understand. Right. We'd like to, before we, you know, Censor your action, we'd like to more fully understand it. Would you like it? You got to do that. I can do it right now. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead and then put you something together. Well, because we're almost done here. And because uh, we put it on our letterhead. Do we have a letterhead? Yeah. Okay, I want to make sure. Yeah, it's, uh, to make it official. Okay. I mean, you've got a full concept in your mind that of what we're trying to say and do anyway. So it didn't make any sense of, for me to write it. You know, we, we got somebody here that's already got it kind of semi put together a minute. So of all this information we got from Effingham, there's a Timothy Otterbach uh, email. There's a Tom Gross email. I'll just put this down. There's Chair, uh, Effingham Conservation Commission. Commission uh, Chairman uh, Effingham Conservation Commission, Smith College Professor uh, Bob Newton, Saco River Corridor. That's Effingham Planning Board, and the Town of Porter. Town of Porter is uh, sort of like three quarters of a page. Maybe if they make it easy. Yeah. But here is okay. Anybody, uh, any more uh, items under that for the board for discussion? Anything no, I think we'll just need to get acceptance via email from everybody. Yes. We'll have to give it to, uh, that's great, we'll have to get it, uh, everybody to accept it. Other board members are not here, at least one of them, Saban would have to accept it. Roger wouldn't because he's an author. Uh, when Andy sent it to me, I'll put it on. 
Oh, and they only send it out to us? I'll send it out to all of you. Okay. And then, okay. like you said, if you want to hand deliver it. I'll hand deliver it. I have no problem with that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, if you get um, an email for their planning board, be happy to forward it to their planning board so they get electronic and hard copy. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Discussions are completed this time as far as the board members are concerned. You all set, Andy? Mm -hmm. Aaron? I'm good. Okay. Now, we're ready for the big one. Mr. Wright, open to public questions. We're open at this time. Okay. I, 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 I have two things. Yes, sir. But we'll go back to the first thing about discussion about the gas station in Effingham. Yes, sir. Um, it is important because we do get our drinking water. Absolutely. And it's a good idea that you are going to send a letter as a representative of the planning board. But I also think there should be a letter sent by the selectmen to uh, maybe have their concerns as well as another voice. Good point. Mm. Very good point. Mr. And, Harvey. Uh, uh, yeah, our selectmen is right <laughs> here. Our selectmen right here. Would you, if you guys, you're not meeting until next Tuesday, though, are you? Yeah, please can look into it. Yeah. Can you look into it? Yeah. I would like to see both letters go together. Okay. I think it would have more power if your letter and our letter went together as a package. Well, the office is closed on Fridays. The, yeah, it's closed on Friday. So it's only tomorrow, so it'll be Monday at the earliest. I, <clears throat> whoever sends out the letter first goes first, and okay. the second, yeah. the second. Well, they might not be, ready, I'll take ours. They might want to discuss it on Tuesday. Yeah, they might. And that would put you four or five days behind. Yeah. So I think the, the sooner okay. the sooner the better on, on that. Yeah. Um, and there is a YouTube video of of this whole situation because Tim could probably explain it better than I can. But um, you know there was a gravel pit there, and that's yeah, that's, sure was. that's all the material has been removed. Right. So things have changed. They, they things. Videos were for, um, okay. Right. So, they, so they have we have the video. Oh, we're great. Go online yep. and look at. Yep. Yep. Okay. But right. I didn't. I didn't need to do it for me because I looked at the, the drawing. I can sure. understand what I know about aquifers. Sure. I understand that gravel pits. Right. So I understood what the the ground was disturbed because of that <clears> gravel pit. Right. And when they filled it back in, you're not going to be re, able to compact it back to the full compaction that was there before. No, I I, I get that, and and also. Um, you know, permits were given sometimes to people that, they, you know, things, have, laws have changed and stuff. Gas stations were next to the river. Now they're trying to maybe push them away from the river. Right. There is a gas station in Freedom uh, the same owner, and um, I've seen his pumps yeah. leaking uh, diesel fuel uh, as I was getting gasoline there. And, and I had to tell him, hey, your, your pump is leaking. And that's right next to the, yeah, right next to the river. Uh, whatever your grandmother did doesn't make it right for no. today. That's right. Um, so I'd like Tim to talk, but I also want to talk about Long Pond and the Alum, that they, they want to treat the pond. But I'd like to have Tim talk first. Long Pond? Um, yeah, Long Pond. They, they want to treat the pond. Treat? I haven't heard about that at all. Okay. Well, that, that's why I want the planning board also to get involved uh, a little bit, too, on septic systems around the pond and stuff like that. We should have a septic study, uh, and it should be documented and to know who's got a viable system and who doesn't have a viable system. Because if they treat this pond with alum, it, it, it might not last for a long time because the uh, contributors are still going in there. The, yeah. the people with the, the uh, fluids are going in. Right, the green lawns and the fertilizers and the yeah. septic systems that are still leaking are yeah. going to do it. And this alum treatment is going to cost $250,000. It might not last as long as they think it might last. Yeah. And what happens is the alum gets covered with new material yeah. from the septic system. So I think it's, even though it's a private pond per se, and it's not so much our money, I, it, they are taxpayers, and we should really do a, a septic study uh, on that whole pond, on all our ponds, to find out you know, what's, what's going well, on. That's going to be really, that's going to take some time. It's going to take some time, but we've been trying to do this for a long time, and I'm just bringing it up to, I bring it up to every board, and I'm yes. bringing it up again. Good. Um, just to, so I'm That's just going to keep that brief because I can come back next week. But I'd like Tim to uh, say a few words. If but you I like your idea about doing that study because the fluids going in, they will knock out that chemical over a short period of time. It won't take long. Right. That's it, a good point. Okay. 
And no one from may Tim speak? Just a minute. Uh, okay. If there's no one else from the township at this time to speak. Harvey? Okay. okay. Uh, I need to do it. Yep. For Legal. Legal. Yep. I got it. So uh, if there's no one else, we'll at this time uh, have anyone else in the office that would like to speak to the board. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate the time you're allowing me to take for the board members. So, um, my name is Tim Otterbach, and for the interest of uh, transparency and disclosure, I'm a board member on Osby Lake Alliance. Yep. I'm an active member of Green Mountain Conservation Group. I do a lot with them with the building committee. I'm a, I'm a, a long-term architect, I'm trying to be retired, and uh, I'm also a five and a half year member of the OSPE planning board. So you, are you on the planning board now? Currently. And I am uh, also a former member of the OSPE uh, Conservation Commission. And uh, with that said, you, you, you covered a lot of ground that I'm going to cover, so I'll try to protract it a little bit because, like you say, you have a lot of information in front of you. I appreciate that you've all taken right. the time to read it, and, and if you haven't done so, and I think you have, but uh, yes. um, take a look at the video that Bob Newton put together, uh, only because Bob is probably the preeminent person relative to knowledge about the Osby Aquifer and, and geology and geography in the area as well. And uh, he, he's a, he's a, has been coming here for years and years with his family, and I think in Madison, and so he knows the area well. He grew up here, um, mostly summers, but uh, um, interesting man. <laughs> Uh, with that said, um, I'm not going to get into the long spiel I was going to give you because I think it's it's not necessary other than very brief history of the gas station and, and that is, uh, I know he's, he's touched on it a wee bit about um, the, uh, the former um, gravel pit and yes, when, when the development to the north was being done, mm -hmm. uh, they stripped off basically the overburden and uh, which was less permeable than the the sand and, and uh, material in the in the in the aquifer itself. So, and the groundwater is about nine feet, eight and a half or nine feet below the surface at the high point of that site. Just as a point of, of matter. Um, also, there is um, uh, adjacent to the site is is Phillips Brook, which runs from uh, Ospey into Effingham, and I mean Effingham into Ospey northward, and, and eventually into Levitt Bay. And obviously, any waters that are flowing there move towards the Osby River and, and east. Uh, similarly, there is a uh, infiltration basin, not a retention basin, which the uh, applicants claims, uh, right alongside Route 25, which is adjacent to the site. And the developer is planning on, by virtual soil, draining their surface runoff into that infiltration basin, which is not legal, but. That'll be a different discussion for everybody else, but I'm just pointing that out. This is part of the um, the site plan submittal that has been presented and is under review now with the Effingham Planning Board, um, which is one of the major concerns. That obviously, we all have, and I know you you hit on all of the major points that I was going to address. But certainly, uh, it, it's good to understand, you know, some of the history. But like I say, I'll, I'll try to be really brief. Right. Um, I have five pages, I can probably whittle it down to about two. <laughs> um, let me see. I won't get into the whole thing about gasoline spills other than the fact that, that nationally there have been numerous studies right. that indicate that roughly 1,500 gallons of gasoline is spilled at a, at a gas station over a 10 year period. And a great percentage, I think it's a majority percentage of that actually finds its way way into the ground and ultimately groundwater. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and of course, we, we all know about the, the contaminants that are in gasoline. I think the big one is obviously is benzene among others benzene, and you know, as a, as a carcinogen. Um, <clears throat> you did a lot of my work for me. <laughs> um, yeah, let me see. We talked about the infiltration basin. Infil infiltration basin excuse me. Generally, the uh, groundwater at that site flows northerly, and obviously, from from my standpoint as an OSPE resident. Um, oh, and, I, and for disclosure, I'm not here on behalf of the OSPE planning board. <laughs> I need to say that. Um, as an OSPE resident, uh, obviously, I'm concerned because there are some 350 OSPE residents north of the site and 60% of them have driven points 
who are potentially at great risk with a spill. Um, and as you may be aware, the gas tanks are already installed, were installed last April. Uh, I'll watch that happen. By approval from DES, but they never received or even submitted documentation or sought approval from the planning board, zoning board, or the building inspector. So in late April, the zone, excuse me, zoning officer issued a cease and desist, and that is in order and in, in force right now, which is why the work has stopped. Um, DEP gave them a letter of approval? The DES gave them an approval on the design of the tanks because- Oh, design, okay. It, it's strictly, their, their oversight is strictly um, the, the, the approval of the design of the underground, underground storage tanks, mm -hmm. USTs. And um, they allude that they also oversee the gas pumps, which they do, it's basically associated equipment. Mm -hmm. But the site constraints and stuff other than the apron and the actual equipment is not under their authority or auspices. And that's where the local authority comes in as the ultimate. That's what the local CEO calls exactly. that. Right. Um, yeah, and of course our, our concern is also that, that well over 200,000 people are being served by the OSPE aquifer as it flows into the, over the state line, because it does extend into Porter to some degree. And I frankly am at a loss as to tell you how far, and I did see the, the maps, I've seen them for years, mm -hmm. but I couldn't tell you exactly where it stops, but we know that the water flows mm -hmm. <laughs> easter, easterly and, and obviously with the river. Um, and both your aquifer and ours, you know, feed into the river and feed ultimately the river, yeah. eastward. And, and, you know, if we had a high, high level or a high impact spill, um, it, could, it could travel even further east on the Saco. And that's, I think, is also a concern. Um, the other thing I did want to mention is that, um, in fact, the, um, the town of Parsonsfield will have legitimate standing based on the state of New Hampshire's RSA because, and that's, that has to do with the determination of regional impact by the, either the planning board or the zoning board. And what we are trying to do is, is to convince by virtue of knowledge, information, and concern uh, to have the planning board make a determination of regional impact so that number one, all of the, all of the affected uh, municipalities and for example, our state, um, uh, what's it called, the uh, Lakes Region Planning Commission would also be notified so that they can then also notify any other potentially affected municipalities. But we also have, um, like the, the, the community of Tamworth has even identified that they're concerned about this as has several other organizations beyond the ones that you've, you've seen. Um, oh, and I wanted to point out one more thing. Uh, when you, when you um, Send, if, you, if and when you send your letter to the town of Effingham, I, uh, they require it electronically. Uh, if you don't, that's just how they work. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I don't have his address right now, but I can send you uh, Nate Frog's email address because he's, he's kind of the, uh, the, the eye of the needle for the town as far as receiving the documents for- He's like the town clerk. Yeah, he, yeah he's more the clerk than the, than the board secretary. Yeah. Yes, and uh, he's a part-timer, but you know, I mean, I correspond with him all the time because I'm involved with other projects. Mm -hmm. And he's out of, out of, not out of state, out of town, but he's on email like late at night. But he'll he'll see it and he will get it to the appropriate board members as quickly as possible. So you're telling us it's better if we do it electronically? Absolutely. Yeah, okay. I think that's much more efficient. Okay. The other problem is that. There's, there's none of the, none of the board members and, and staff are there full time. Right. Even the zoning officers, it's difficult to get a hold of her when you need her. So, uh, yeah, I would highly suggest just, you know, doing that free, via email. And I'll, I'll send Nate Fuller's email address over to you. Uh, uh, I can do it this evening. I know you probably won't get it, look at it until tomorrow. But yeah. um, anyway. Yeah. Well, I already sent the email to everybody. I mean, okay. the letter to everybody's email. So if you guys want to look at it tonight. Uh, you should have it too. Yes, I'm looking at it right now. It's pretty simple. It don't take much. No. Sure. Probably just two, two little paragraphs all you read. Three. Mm -hmm. Maybe that three? Okay. And Mr. Chairman, one thing you brought up to me, or made me think about, because you're, you're a civil engineer, did I hear you? Uh, no, I'm a civil engineer by Air Force for 22 years. Oh, absolutely. Excellent. Air Force 22 years civil engineer. God bless you. <laughs> um, one of the things that, that we noticed 
right away, and this is the second proposed gas new gas station, so to speak, in the area. And I call it new because in 2016, Mr. Boyle chose to dis discontinue gas because he had to upgrade the tanks. And through a DES-funded program, they removed the tanks and uh, did, in fact, determine there was some contamination underneath the pad. Oh. But it was, it was minor, and it was not at the groundwater level and based on state standards and even federal standards they felt since the new pad is going in right where the old one was based on the discussion and the, and the plan from the applicant did they take out the contaminants they did not they, it was minor the number I, I, There's no big <laughs> you don't leave it in the ground i understand i i was in awe when i heard that but with that said um there are reports on that um if you so require, I can probably make sure that you get them. Um, wow. Again, if there's any additional information that, that, that certainly I've been produced only a little bit for you in the way of the, the correspondence, but also the, my presentation, if there's additional information you need, um, the group that I'm involved with, which includes Bob Newton and, and uh, my fellow board members on the Osby Lake Alliance and uh, two water quality specialists and the chairman of Green Mountain, I mean, the uh, Executive Di Director of Green Mountain Conservation Group. They're all on our group that we're involved with this Thank effort. Um, they have put together an immense file of documents, um, just documenting the site, the conditions, and then, of course, the, the, the proceedings of both the planning board and the zoning board. And um, you, know, you pointed out that certainly the, their groundwater protection ordinance did state explicitly that gas stations at that site are prohibited. And the town did adopt that ordinance in 2012. And uh, to was me- Was that gas station still active in 2012? No, yes it was, yes. But, but in New Hampshire, once a use is discontinued for more than two years, it is no longer considered a continuous mm -hmm. use. And okay. then, so the, so the current that, zoning is in force. It's not words, grandfathered in. Oh, no, no. And that was a, that was a great thing that they, they put into the ordinance. And I believe 108 towns in New Hampshire now have that same similar okay. ordinance based on the on the okay. board. Um, but I was going to mention that, and again, you'll, you'll appreciate this, that one of the things that they did not include in the plan, and it's not required by the state of New Hampshire, is a storm scepter and holding tank for you know, paved surface or, or, or uh, impervious surface runoff. And uh, I've, I've done projects all over the eastern half of the country, and some of them have been fuel dis delivery stations and stuff like that. And all of them, every mm -hmm. state except for one that I know of, has required Run storm sectors and yeah. containment. Yeah. And uh, that's the other thing. There's no curbing originally in the, in, in the design right now. And all of these play into the, the fact that any surface runoff is going to find its way into the soil. Yeah, absolutely. And with the groundwater where it is, and across 25 is a wetland, so there's a lot of you know water moving northward in the in the uh, in the aquifer that any contamination occurs, it's going to have an impact. And as we all know, and, and, and this is in spite of what DES claims, they claim that well the system that's in their state standard is a is a fail-proof state-of-the-art system. And I will say yes, it is a state-of-the-art system. It is the best that you conceivably can have at the moment based upon technology. Right. But as we know, um, valves, sensors, pumps, uh, hoses, they all can fail. And then, of course, there's the human factor. And, and we all know that, like in, 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 in Carroll County alone, in the last 10 years, there's been 10 major, well, not major spills, but 10 spills. The largest one was 45 gallons. And uh, they were all, all but one were um, human error. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, nationwide, and we've done some, ex like I say, some extensive studies just because we want to get educated on this. And there are s an immense number of spills that occurred when modern, like even new equipment, has failed within weeks of the operation starting. So it is a concern for all of us. And, and likewise, our neighbors to the east. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I have friends in several towns east of the state line, and you know, when they heard about this, they said that is just nuts. Nice. <laughs> So, can, um, can yeah. I ask you a question? Sure. Um, you mentioned briefly that White Oil did catch up? He had, he had an old system. Yeah, yeah, and there was a, I believe there was, and I don't, I, don't quote me on this, but I believe there was a, a date by which 
every gas station in New Hampshire had to upgrade their tanks because I know that sta uh, Abbott Staples, um, the one just down the road in Freedom, um, Aloha on Route 16, Mark McConkie's, mm -hmm. um, Watson's, um, the, the one down by Hannaford's, and the one further south on 16. There's all of those, by right? All of those have have been updated. I know McConkie's was updated when he had a leaking tank. Okay. Um, Abbott Staples was updated when they had a leaking tank, and so now all of our, I call them near regional gas stations, have the updated system, and. Um, Mr. Boyles was the last one that was. All right. So he chose not to update. Yeah, and so he. Let me ask you next oh, go ahead. He he ran a convenience store after the tax were out for what seven years? Um, close to it. It was five years. Five, yeah, yeah, it's five been five years. years. Did he run it profitably? Oh yes, yes. As a matter of fact, one of the people that came before the planning board at our last meeting had pointed out that. Um, you know, he, he knew Mr. Boyle personally was going to actually get a document from him that stated just that fact. And, and I, you know, I used to do business with them and, uh, you know, stopping there when I'm traveling east and west. And, and I, think, I asked him one day. I think that store was open when I first moved here. Oh, yeah. It was, it was open. Yeah, it was open as. Because this is 22. I only been here a year now. So that had to be open in 18 or 19, too. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh no no! Um, yeah, it was because when I first moved here, that's oh, you're open. correct. You're correct. It was it was the store itself was open. Two thousand and if I'm not mistaken, he closed doors in two thousand and twenty or at the end of nineteen. Right. Okay. I, I know it was it was related because he, he was ready. Shortly after I moved here, they closed. It. Yes. Yes. So um, yeah, but um, yeah, I was just going to state that he he did you know he did say he was he was not willing to put in the new tanks and he understood the implications because the um, the river right next there, um, the Phillips, Phillips Brook, I should say, mm -hmm. um, is probably has one of the most um, sensitive waterways and it is under the greatest challenges in this whole part of the state and wow. is being studied and tested right now constantly. Um, it's getting cleaner and cleaner, but it was heavily challenged in the past. Wow. And, since it runs right into the bay, um, you know, mm -hmm. there are many people both in Effingham, mm -hmm. Freedom, and Ossipee who live on the lakes and bays and even some of the adjacent rivers who are concerned about the potential contamination from the standpoint of not only losing their water quality but also the value of their property, which I say to you, um, it's, it's, it's not a minor thing, but it's, I think it's secondary to water quality. What's that, contamination? No, I'm saying the value of your property, and, and, the, and then of course, for the township, the municipality is the loss of revenue because of the, the, tax, the tax burden for that, those properties being reduced. Right. But with that said, um, I, I was gonna appeal to you to uh, respectfully submit a letter to the, uh, <laughs> To the planning board of Effingham, and it sounds like you have. Uh, He's already pinned it up. While yeah, we're I, and I, I greatly appreciate your time here, and I will be very brief. But if you do have any immediate questions, feel free. And if any come up, feel free to email me anytime because I'm usually up to at least uh, <clears throat> midnight every night, and uh, I will I will promptly respond to any questions or send it back to my team because, like I said, we have several what I would consider water quality experts, as well as Dr. Newton, who right. is, like I say, is the free yeah, I have a lot of background in contaminants yeah. and fuels yeah. and all that. So yeah. that's why I was able to speak like nice. that. Nice, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, and I think it helps us out uh, to have that information on our board. And then, uh, then Andy's put together that document already, so we'll get to review that later tonight or tomorrow so we can answer, answer Desiree back, or are you back, Andy? <coughs> Just give it to her? No. I just, I mailed it to her. So okay. Yeah, I'm making it pretty. Okay, you're making it pretty. <laughs> All right. All right. And Mr. Chairman, one more thing. If, um, if your other board members or even your select board members have additional questions that come, come to bear, um, through Desiree, feel free to, to email me um, because I'll be glad to do my absolute utmost to get the information that you're looking for to you. What time do you need it? When do you need it? Um, Right up until Thursday. <laughs> well, up, the, up until the time you, your, your two boards are planning to forward the letter to the town of Bethany. When is your meeting? It is on the 24th. It's Thursday, I think it is. Yeah, yeah. 
So if you were if you were going to email email something to them, I would say at the latest on Monday. Wednesday. Monday or Tuesday. Yeah, I mean if you can do it Monday or Tuesday, that would be excellent. Probably if we can get it out on Tuesday, we'd be doing good. That'd be good for us. I give them a couple. I give them a yeah, day or so. Because they there. they don't function at all on Fridays over there. <laughs> they're just they're just not there. Right. Right. Um, so Harvey just asked if if we send our letter to the selectmen, if it's okay if they just sign at the bottom. Oh, Get put your signature support? block on it? Can't you guys even write it there? You can certainly do that. One of these other yeah. One of these other letters is like that. And I'll have you, you know see it? that no, yeah, it's signed by about four different people. Right. And last night the um, Freedom <clears throat> Conservation Commission, I believe it's the Conservation Commission. I'm not sure about the planning board or selectmen yet, but I know at least one of the boards has chosen to again draft draft a similar letter uh, addressing the need for the um, planning board in Effingham to make a determination of regional impact so that you know the towns can have their you know have their input but see how they do yeah, I'm no, I, I don't want to interrupt you. No. If you I'm if you so choose to come to the meeting on Thursday, um, you are able to speak. As a, as a, even if we're from a different state, we have had two or three people come from Maine already that have spoken, and, and I that don't is, know that our state would apply no, our that state. yeah, it, it, it's considered general public, and it does not discriminate state lines, and especially when we're right at the board. Okay. <clears throat> no, I don't think I'll. Uh... However, if you had, if you have a letter in their hands, they would, they would so acknowledge as well. So. Um. I think that's the big thing is to have a letter to them signed by. Uh, my, I have to sign the letter from the planning board chair. Then we need to have the selectmen sign it. Either the chairman sign it or all selectmen sign it if you want to do it that way. And I think we should have the CEO sign it too. Yeah, yeah. Or that chief uh, code enforcement officer. Right. He should sign it. I, I would just do uh, the select board chair then. Okay. That way it doesn't take up all the. Yeah, don't have to be so big. And then also have Jesse sign it too. Yeah, I know. I know other code enforcement officers have likewise, like you said. I think one of the letters has multiple signatures from mm -hmm. different entities within them. It's got four of them. Right, right. Well, I appreciate your time, and I'm not going to take up any more because it's late and it's cold, and uh, yep. I have a wood stove that's calling me. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so we're through with open to public questions. Unless Harvey's got a question. Yeah. <laughs> well, I just want to know basically, are you going to have a workshop? That's where, well, I'm going to get, if we're through with uh, open to public questions, we'll, we'll skip on down to number seven now. <coughs> schedule a workshop for Wednesday, March the 2nd. Do we want to schedule a workshop? Yes, for what? What would we need? What do we need to have a workshop? We need to continue discussing the, what we workshopped in the last, at the last workshop, going through the ordinances. I don't know if you saw so the <coughs> You just got divided up between all five of Yeah, I just saw that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So we, that's the big thing for us to get through this. Since we've already done the letter, we don't have to have a discussion because we've already done it. We discussed it in here. Um, the only thing that we have open right now would be the uh, land use and development ordinance and how we're dividing up and things we need to go through on there. I think it was something else I was thinking about too. We, I spoke right up earlier. Hmm. It's gone now. I, I don't know. We can't have we can't have a workshop. We can't address uh, applications. No. Specific applications. No. Have a workshop. So no. Sad, right? no. I move for us to have a workshop on March second, twenty twenty two, six p.m. March. Wednesday, March the 2nd at 6 p.m. Yep. Do I have a second for that? I'll second it, but I won't be here. Okay. All in favor, show of hands. Approved. So we have a workshop for Wednesday, March the 2nd at 6 p.m. And the only thing that's going to be on that is just for land use and development ordinance. Yeah, that's all. Okay. Now then, before we adjourn, did you want to do executive session? Uh, executive session. Can you read that? <laughs> so before you make that motion, if it's about a specific person who is not here, you cannot hold it because that person needs to be here. Okay. 
I was trying to figure out a way to answer his question. His question. That and I can't person, do it. That person would need to be here. I can't do it publicly 